Hello everyone, this is Ross Heinersee. Welcome to lesson number six on the paganization of Western culture through the three false gods that we've been identifying through the scripture and through some understanding that author Jonathan Kahn has put together in his book, Return of the Gods, how we're connecting the dots of the ancient people of Israel and their battle against the false gods of the Canaanite nation surrounding them in the promised land. And three particular gods that at times had been introduced and integrated into uh, Jewish culture as an, as an anti-god versus the one true god of the Bible, the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And these false gods that were introduced at different times became a, uh, it, it became a spiritual, Israel became a spiritual battlefield. And the gods at play were the gods of either Baal, Ishtar, or Molech versus the god of the Bible. And so let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, I ask you tonight that you bless as we do this study, as I again bring out some of these truths that I have found revealed through your word and through the book by Jonathan Kahn concerning present day America, Western culture, and the attack of the evil one through these different demonic entities known as these false gods of Baal, Molech, and Ishtar. And I pray, Father, that you would reveal to us what we need to know and then, uh, Lord, as we look further into the victory that we can have over these gods that seek to destroy our culture and our nation that we know as modern-day America, and we pray that you would just guide and direct in everything we say and do. God, I give you the glory for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me begin by reading the book of 1 Kings in the Old Testament of the Bible. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 4 through 8. I'm going to introduce to you the spirit, the second spirit God, whose name is Molech, or is also known as Chemosh, C-H-E-M-O-S-H, Chemosh, who is the God of the Moabites and the Amorites, uh, Ammonites. Uh, they have two different names, uh, Molech and, and Shemosh or Chemosh, but they're like most likely, if not identically, the same God, just two different culture groups identifying him two different ways, but the same God. Now, what's interesting is that this false God was introduced to the Jewish people by none other than King Solomon himself, which is very sad that that's part of his legacy. But here we are, 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 4 through 8. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ash Ashtaroth, the goddess of of the Sidonians, which is, by the way, that's Ishtar. That's just another name for Ishtar, who we'll talk about in a little bit. Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon also did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord fully, as did his father David. Verse 7, 1 Kings chapter 11. Then Solomon built a high place for Shemosh, for the abomination of Moab on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Now, the exact meaning of the name Shemosh is not understood, though some scholars believe it means destroyer or subduer. Shemosh was also seen as a fish god. He was the national deity of the Moabites and the Ammonites. And according to the Moabite stone, which is called the Misha steel. And by the way, these stones are where they would write their history or write some, some what they would write in stone historically uh, things that they wanted to re be remembered historically because things that were written in stone lasted forever. So the Moabite stone is called the Misha steel and Shemosh was associated with the goddess Ashtaroth, Ashtaroth, who was another false god and he was worshiped or she was worshiped by the wayward Israelites as we also mentioned in the scripture. Now, the New World Encyclopedia says, the etymology of Shemosh is unknown. One rendering of the name Misha, Shemosh Melech, indicates the probability that the Shemosh and the Ammonite god Molech were one of the same deity known as Shemosh Molech. Sorry, there was a, uh, one of those warnings on your phone. Okay? So, According to the Moabite stone, an inscription created by the Moabite king Misha, Shemosh was the supreme Moabite deity who brought victory in battle when his people honored him properly through child sacrifice, but Shemosh would allow them to be 
uh, defeated by their enemies when they failed to sin and not offering child sacrifices. So this god Molech, also known as Shemosh, but from here on out we'll call him Molech, uh, because the names are synonymous, like I said, the different cultures gave him different names for the same god. In order to please this false god, you would have to offer a child in sacrifice. You'd have to do child sacrifices. So the scripture calls Molech the abomination of Moab. You can look it up in 1 Kings chapter 11 and Jeremiah chapter 32. Unfortunately, as we read in 1 Kings, Molech worship was introduced to Israeli or Israelite culture by none other than King Solomon, who his heart was turned away from the one true God based upon all the wives he had married who worshiped false gods and then turned his heart away to their gods. Molech was one of these gods worshiped by, his, by the wives, but eventually the culture and the cult of Molech was destroyed in Judah by none other than the king Josiah, and we find that in 2 Kings chapter 23. But the worship of Molech was truly an abomination. In one place in scripture, uh, Molech's demanding human sacrifices during the days of King Jer Jehoram and the king of Moab who faced military defeat. Now they had teamed up with Moab, King Jehoram and Judah did. And the Moabite ruler then, according to 2 Kings chapter 3, took his firstborn son up to the walls of the city and sacrificed him to this false god, Shemosh or Molech. Now let me read to you a couple pages out of Jonathan's book, Jonathan Kahn, uh, the book Return of the Gods. Let me read to you a couple parts out of chapter um, 22, verse, uh, pages 96 and 97. Molech is the spirit and god of child sacrifice. It is the principality of bloodlust, of cold, inhuman, and horrid destruction. In his epic poem, Paradise Lost, John Milton writes the writes of this ancient god. First Molech, horrid king besmeared with blood, of human sacrifice and parents' tears, though for the noise of drums and timbrels loud, the ch children's cries unheard that passed through the fire to his grim idol. Also this part here on page 97. The Darkest Depths is the title of this paragraph. Child sacrifice was part of the rites and worship of the pagan peoples and cultures that surrounded the Israelites. So when the Israelites turned away from their God, they turned to the gods that were surrounding them in these cultures. And they began offering up their children to these false gods. The prophet Jeremiah would confront the depths of their fall from God and the gruesome sin they were now partaking in and celebrating. So Jeremiah was one of the prophets of the Old Testament, as you know. Uh, one of the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel are the major prophets, and he was one of them. This is what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Molech. It was the deepest and darkest of depths in their fall, from worshiping the one true God. Now, the greed for gain and the passion for pleasure are earmarks of the promises Baal makes to his devotees. In order to achieve maximum pleasure and fully indulge into hedonistic living and lifestyle, no sacrifice would be considered too great. So when you've got Baal and then you've got Molech, you're willing to sacrifice anything to have their promises of blessing and prosperity. That means even if it's killing your own children. And Moloch's desire is not only to kill your children, but as you see, when you kill your children, you're also destroying your future. Let me read you a couple of thoughts from Jonathan's book out of page 106. 106. What was it that would cause a mother of ancient times to lift the children of her womb to Moloch? First, one thing, she believed that by doing so, she would obtain her God's favor. Her fields would be fruitful, she would be given prosperity, her prayers would be answered, and her life would be blessed. The Greek writer, Clitarchus, is credited with this report connecting child sacrifice and gain. So here's an ancient source that Jonathan is, is citing in his book, Return of the Gods. And here's what this writer, Clitarchus, wrote. Out of reverence for Kronos, the Phoenicians, and especially the Carthaginians, Whenever they seek to obtain some great favor, vow one of their children, 
burning it as a sacrifice to the deity if they are especially eager to gain success. So, the modern replaying, what would lead a mother to kill the son or daughter of her womb? The most frequent answer given is that she, that if the child lived, it would hamper the mother's life, take her time, take her energy, keep her from getting education that she needs or furthering a career that she wants, thus uh, making her incapable of succeeding in life. The child would be an a burden to her aspirations. Thus, by killing the child, the hindrance and burden would be removed and she would be in a better position to achieve her goal and attain success and prosperity. So basically what uh, Jonathan is doing in his book is he is taking these thoughts and bringing them together that these ancient gods were telling those people, sacrifice your children so you can get ahead, so that you'll be better off. You don't need the children. Chase success. Chase prosperity. Listen to what Jonathan continues to write on page 109. So the modern child of child sacrifice, which we call abortion, was likewise hailed for its benefits on the public good. The killing of babies was said to benefit society, not only in freeing women to pursue careers, but for holding the promises of breakthrough in medicine and health. To further enhance this public good and to increase the profit margin, the abortion industry now engages and has been engaging in the sale of baby parts harvested from murdered children. The spirit of Molech, mixed, having mixed children's blood with profit, made a society that was willing to consume itself in order to please itself. Now, I watched a video the other day. It was another undercover video that was done at a Planned Parenthood. And basically, the, the person doing the videoing had the secretly recording. Um, and they were talking to someone at Planned Parenthood who was then talking about the fact that they could sell hearts, lungs, kidneys, or you could buy the whole cadaver. And the Planned Parenthood person actually said you can buy the whole cadaver. They said, we now have an order right now for 150 of these from people around the world. You see, it's lucrative to destroy children to prosper yourself. Molech promised that. Baal hinted at the prosperity idea. Molech fulfilled this prosperity through killing the children to have gain. Listen to this. The Greek philosopher Plato wrote of how the Carth Carthaginian culture viewed child sacrifice. Here's what Plato wrote. With us, for instance, human sacrifice is not legal but unholy, whereas the Carth Carthaginians perform it as a thing they account both holy and legal. So Greek culture, no, it's unholy and it's illegal. Child sacrifice, killing, abortion, all of that's wrong. But in the Carthaginian culture, it's both holy and legal to have human sacrifice. So the Carthaginians, as Jonathan continues to write, not only legalized the practice, they deemed it as holy. Even this ancient dynamic was replayed in our culture and has been replayed in American culture and the modern world. The killing of an unborn child was not only legal, it's hallowed as a sacred right, and I've heard them say this, it's my body, my choice, it's my right, this is my sacred thing, this is how I want to live, and it's to be praised, celebrated, and venerated as something both beautiful and sacrosanct, which is not, but that's how they do it. So that's when we talk about Moloch, we talk about uh, how it's influenced American culture through abortion and the killing of not just the unborn, but they were, in New York, I've heard them applaud at their at their state at the state level of of their state senate and congress there in new york of signing bills into law that saying that the child uh you can abort the child up to the day of birth and there's already there's been talk numerous times scores of times of having the the legal permission to kill the child after it's born if once you see it you realize you don't want that child. You don't want to have that child. Sadly, that's where we are. So we've covered, covered the God of Baal and the bull, Molech and the child sacrificed. Now let's talk about Ishtar. Let me read to you Judges chapter 2 verses 11 through 15. This is the third pagan god that is now infiltrated in Acts and, and, and is fully 
embraced in American society and Western culture. Judges chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them. And they provoked the Lord Yahweh to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtoreths. The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So he delivered them to the hands of plunderers who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around so they can no longer stand against their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were greatly distressed. Judges chapter 2 verses 11 through 15. This, the Assyrio-Babylonian Ishtar, the mother, mother of goddesses, of the mother goddess, was the equal of the deity known to the Hebrews as, the, as Ashtoreth, and to the Canaanites as Astarte, whose figurines are found in Palestine even today. This goddess of fertility, of maternity, of sexual love, and of war was worshipped in every immoral way you could conceive and in ceremonies. In so much as they were wicked rituals associated with this worship, it aroused God's indignation, especially when it appears to have been a notable part of the idolatry that Israel now practiced. God's prophets publicly denounced it and called the house of Israel to rep repent from these corrupt practices. You can find some references there in Jeremiah chapter 7, Jeremiah chapter 44, and Ezekiel chapter 8. You'll find references to Ishtar or Ashtoreth, this false god, that was the goddess of fertility, maternity, sexual love, and war. Listen to 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the uh, Ammonites. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow fully follow the Lord as his father David did. Let me read to you further now out of uh, Jonathan Kahn's book, Return of the Gods. Page 117 and 118. Let me read you a couple paragraphs. Now, this is all about the god Ishtar. Now, this is playing out continually and daily in a modern American culture and in Western culture at large, but especially in our culture here in the United States of America on a regular basis daily. Here's the title. Uh, first of all, the title of the first paragraph, something about Ishtar. Ishtar was a sorceress. She was known for her powers to alter people's affections, passions, thoughts, and at time, their very essence. Now, here's what's said more about her. The title of this paragraph, I am a woman, I am a man. In her Ishtar, in her link to the planet Venus, she was known as the morning star, but also the evening star. And the power just went out. That's great. Well, guys, the power has gone out, so I'll continue this video at a later time.